the Charlie Reimer Golf Show, starring Charlie Reimer. Hey, okay, let's pick up the tempo. Charlie Reimer here, and welcome to my new show, where we do things my way. <laughs> As a former golf pro and media personality, I know golf. But this isn't going to be your grandfather's golf show. I'm bringing you conversations with celebs and golf greats, getting off the course and out on the water, and even getting into some good eats. This is the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. Keep it in the fairway, folks. Strap in, folks. We've got an hour of golf, laughs, and good times in Myrtle Beach coming your way. First up, it's the inaugural Project Golf 18 for 18. Nine-time major champion Gary Player teams up with Grammy award-winning musician Charles Kelly of Lady A to take on six-time major champion Nick Faldo and Mark Bryan of Hootie and the Blowfish. These superstars are facing off at Dunes Golf and Beach Club in Myrtle Beach to raise money for Project Golf an organization dedicated to growing the game through outreach to America's military veterans, junior golfers, and underrepresented communities. Good morning, everybody. It's so great to be here at Dunes Golf and Beach Club. This is the inaugural Project Golf 18 for 18. So we've got this contest today, over 18 holes, the two two-man scrambles. They're gonna be playing for a wonderful trophy. Along the way, we're gonna have some special prizes on each hole. I'm gonna be messing with them the best I can, I can tell you that too. Now on the tee, Mr. Gary Player. Okay. Sir Nick Faldo. Oh yeah. Woo. Nice. Charles Kelly. Yep. All right. Go ahead and top it in that water like Mark's going to do. <laughs> Cut. Nice. Kick. Kick right. Great shot. Great nice. shot. Nice. Look at that. Look, he's holding. He needs to hold it. Wow. wow. Jeez. You son of a gun, I thought you were spending time with singing. You'd be on the golf course, man. Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest bunker player on planet Earth. How about the sound of that? Why do you oh, have to God. do that to me? <laughs> what do you have to do? Oh, my God, 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 oh, my God. 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 I had the best bunker shot of my life, and you had to do that to me. Nope. Oh, my God. That's good. That's no, good. No, 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 no. No? <laughs> are you crazy? Those are good at my club. He's with, Those are pickings. He's playing with my money here, you know what I mean? It's a hell of a hat they get There we go. Oh, <laughs> good the prize club. here was a Dustin Johnson signed master's flag because Mark and Sir Nick choked on that putt. Nobody <laughs> won the hole. That, that's how much we wanted it. <laughs> how about a chance to support Project Golf? Anyone interested in a nice bid on this flag? I am. $1,000. $1,000. Oh, whoa, whoa, that's great. $1,500. $1,500. I want two. 2000 for Charles Kelly. I want Gary and Nick to both sign it, too. Yeah, we got to do for that. For $2,000? That's a hell $3, of a $3,000. They both signed it. 3000 sold to Charles <laughs> Kelly for $3,000. They both this is the guy you want to be married to, man. <laughs> Whoa. Woo! Gee, Riz. If somebody find a guitar, Mark and I'll sing something. Pretty good. Hey. I got it going a this little is, that way. Yeah, it's definitely going to go. Better? Yes, sir. Better, better, better. <laughs> so don't tell me we won a Dustin Johnson flag for that. <laughs> I mean, we're right out of that. How do I get you to play soft notes? 
<laughs> That's good speed, right there. Nick. Right there. Lousy line. Now you can have your Pete Townsend stroke, OK? Pete Townsend. Boom. Oh, oh, whoa, what a that good. Miss it! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's the deal. Through five holes, this match is even. I want these players really motivated on this sixth hole. So what we're going to do is the losing team, I'm going to be taking over their social media accounts for a day. And even Gary Player, at his advanced age, knows what social media is, don't you, Mr. Player? I think I do. <laughs> Here's what you know. You don't want me <laughs> tweeting for you for a no whole day. Siri, no sirree, no <laughs> sirree. <laughs> now that is some motivation. Good luck, gentlemen. Guess what? It's going to be a tie this hole. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Oh, my goodness. Cut. Oh, it's about the Bryson line over the... Wow. Straight. Wow. You really are scared, aren't you? And not my best effort. I must really want Charlie to speak for me on social media. <laughs> I'm just glad you can play and sing. Oh, buddy. That is so good. Nice. So good. Great drive, Nick. 105. Right, this is it. We're going to hold this one. Hell yeah. Mr. Player, you really don't want me to take over your social media account. You know <laughs> that, right? I'm, that's why I'm trying like hell. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, this is a really tough angle. I mean, does it intimidate you? What are you in your 56? Yeah. I don't hit it as long as you, Charlie. You ever hit that, that 56 out of the rough? You ever hit it like fat? Hey, hey, don't put my man off. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. Good shot. Oh, and under it. That's better. Get up. Get there. Get there. Get there. Get there. Get there. Oh, what a nice shot. That's all right. That's pretty good. That's why he's Gary Player. Go! Jesus. Is that why you did this for a living? <laughs> I've got a lot of kids to feed, boy. God, look at his speed. It's so perfect, always. Oh, his speed is so perfect. Jesus. Oh, my goodness. You so, made, ladies uh, and gentlemen, that hole is halved. I will be taking over all four social media <laughs> accounts next Tuesday. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stick around for more of the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. Welcome back to the Project Golf 18 for 18 on the Charlie Romer Golf Show. Let's get back into the fun. All right, everybody. Y'all having a great time today? Yeah. So we're going to reset a little bit to match through eight holes. Mark and Nick are two up. What I want to do is let everybody know why we're here today. 18 for 18 is raising money for Project Golf. Uh, an amazing foundation here in Myrtle Beach is based out of Barefoot that provides tremendous services for vets, and a lot of our vets are here today, guys, and they're having a great time coming out. Thank you for your service. What our competitors don't know is that closest to the hole here, and it's going to put a lot of pressure on them, wins two tickets to the PGA Championship for their yeah. caddy. He's like, I'm bringing my wife. No, it's me. Gentlemen, play away. Get right. Ooh. Just over swinging, guys. El Toro, you're going to have to watch the PGA Championship on television. <laughs> ah, ugly, ugly. My man. Mom. Get in the hole, baby. Mom, man. Get in Mom, the hole. Man. He did, he did the uh, Mick Jagger. Hey. <laughs> wow. You put the music on. I'll show you a few moves, baby. Yeah. 
Oh, man. This is fun. Catch it. Lovely and delicate. Mr. Player, you won the tickets for Chris Aranda, a vet. Joined the Army back in 1984. Served in a number of overseas tours, including Korea, Panama, Hawaii. Served in combat in Iraq. Chris, you rock, buddy. Wow, that's awesome. You rock. Just, just being out here today and uh, us taking care of our veterans, seeing the community come out and supporting our veteran cause, it's a win-win for everybody. So, truly appreciate it. Through nine holes, Sir Nick Faldo, Mark Bryan are one up over Charles Kelly. Oh, we just and him. Gary Player, yeah. Never heard of him. we have a special treat for you. It's time for a little entertainment. I believe we have a musical instrument. All right. Mark, you know the song, Don't Let the Old Man In? Will I walk back down? Will I walk back down? Sun comes up tomorrow, let her be. Let Wait. her be. And I want, I want, this, this little <laughs> mini carry right here. The one final, final note. There you go. Let her be. be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. Wow. Can you tell we haven't done this in a year and a half? <laughs> I get a telegram from Elvis Presley. Come on. He says, I want to meet you. I said, I want to meet you, King. So I'm in Los Angeles. I go down there, he's doing a movie called Hawaii. He says, I want to play golf. Give me your club. He had a grip looked like a cow giving birth to a roll of barbed wire. <laughs> <laughs> so I get his grip right. He says, what do I do? I said, Elvis, you're going to learn to wind up and unwind your hips. He said, oh, well, baby, you told me the right man. <laughs> <laughs> More of the Charlie Romer Golf Show when we get back. Stick around, folks. All right, folks, so we've had a lot of controversy here, but we've decided that the match is even. We're thrilled to be at the signature hole here at the Dunes Golf and Beach Club. We got a few more holes left to play, and uh, this thing will go right down to the wire. Everybody here, our, our professionals and our celebrities, what'd y'all do with uh, Mr. Player? He's too busy telling stories. Look at Come him. on, Gary. We'll get him back to you in a minute. I'm now you're the ones who are doing the talking. I'm risking it. <laughs> I was just explaining that all four of you have a big heart for charity. You've done huge things all across the world. The winners of this hole, the winning team, gets to make a special request of the losing team to help with a donation, maybe an appearance, whatever you guys can work out. Have at it, gentlemen. Oh, okay, Gary. This is good. This. I'm gonna carve this. You sure will. <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be carved like a turkey. You watch this. Add that little steak on the fairway. You see it? Okay. There we go. Woo! Oh my goodness. What's this green do? Does it go pretty flat, as I see Nick? Just like you sang on the tenth tee. Oh my God! Now, now that's fighting words. That's fighting words. Missed. Damn it. Oh, Peter one, baby. Oh, that's gonna that's really gonna annoy him. Oh! <laughs> wow. Yeah, hit it, hit it. Try and hold it. Oh, Look at that. Perfect. Look at this golf shot. Oh, it bit. Nice shot! Mr. Gary Player. Just just to help you, just point the freaking north at the hole. <laughs> and then... 
That's a, a two-shot penalty as a lineman aid. This is... <laughs> All right, this is for Gary Player. Oh, my oh, goodness wow. me. Come down, come down, come down. Yeah. Woo! Shut. That's fun. I love talking to Nick Faldo. <laughs> That's in the hole. That's in the hole. Uh, I'll pick it up. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's good. How about that? Hey. Good Come man. All right, folks, it comes down to this, the 18th hole. It's hard to believe that we got all square to 18. Woo! So play away, Mr. Gary Player. Oh, yes. mm. All right, I feel like we got to, I mean, it's even going in the last hole. I feel like we got to amp it up, do a little something on the line. If you lose, you've got to have Faldo formula tattooed on your... Yes, yes! I would love that! Yes, right there. No, but... Yeah, right there. What have you got there? Any space? Oh, no, she's a bloody flower. I would rather your face. You put right there. <laughs> Faldo formula right there, baby. How about this? For two grand to the charity on this hole. OK. Well, All right. But you're, you're paying for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> You are when you lose. Right. We're in the wrong business. The singing business is a hell of a lot better than golf. You know what he said? He says, Gary, when yeah. you have a crap day, he says, you don't get paid. He says, when I have a bad night singing, I'll still get the same amount. Ah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I did say that. I did say that. All right. 2000 on this to charity. Whoa. That's a good one. Oh, this, man. That is a good one. Oh, hey, yes, hey. Sir. Oh, look at that. Hey! Wow, Hey, 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 my man! Now that's a bubble, big man! Slow and slow. Oh, Oh, no. Oh, buddy. Got it. What's wrong with that, Nick? Not your best, but it ain't bad. So I tell Arnold and Jack that. Wow. You know what they call it inside of I don't know, but it was great. Same as you call it here, talent. Oh, I moved. I moved. I felt myself slide. I'm putting. <laughs> oh, damn it. Hold it. Stay there. Stay there. Hey, guys. $1,000. Faldo can't skip it across the water on the green. Ooh, hey, there we go. Give me one of your golf balls, then. <laughs> Uh, it's very wet down there. OK. Oh, partner, it's time for you to shine. Your peak towns there might be perfect here. Go, go. Oh, you're right in if you hit when it. When I needed it, I didn't The only it time you'd be short today. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> only time you'd be short today. <laughs> 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 hey, Gary, you ain't got to laugh that hard. Jeez. It is funny. Oh, oh, I went yes, for the yes, slammer. All right, folks, this is for the match right here. Nick Faldo, can you pull the pin? Gosh. The queen knighted me. Oh. And he caught in it. Sir, <laughs> Sir Nick Faldo. <laughs> yeah. Sir Nick Faldo, can you pull my pin? Line of the day. Never hated anybody as much as I hate Sir Nick Faldo right now. <laughs> oh, my God! Hey, that is a yeah. hell of a putt, man. You're a new yeah. man with that putt, I'll tell you that. Very nice, sir. Yeah. Sir Nick Faldo! I can't <laughs> believe he shows up at the last what minute. Oh, oh, what a oh, pleasure. Pleasure. What a pleasure. Thank that you, Nick. Fun. I that got it. Fun, I got it. That was too much fun. Oh, look at you guys. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> so this is what golf is all about. We've all had a lot of fun, right? Yeah. And we raised a lot of money for a great cause. Give it up for our winners. <laughs> Dennis, will you do the honors? It was a, it was a hard fought yeah. battle. I don't know how we Come did on. it. Hey, Charles, you hold it. Oh, you hold it, yeah. You hold it. You hold it. Here we are.
up next. I want to share one of my all-time favorite interviews in Myrtle Beach. So don't flip that flippin' flipper, folks. My interview with John Daly when we come back. Today, I'm at TPC Myrtle Beach with a man that likes to grip it and rip it. I'm Charlie Reimer, and this is Riding with Reimer. So you know, John Daly is coming here to play golf with me today. No way. Today, right? No, <laughs> no way. He's John Daly is going to be here, and he's going to play. Yeah. Hey, what's up, boys? <laughs> I told you so. Uh, give me some sugar, Big Daddy. How are you? I probably got here before he did. I, I loaded us up, got all the carts. You're ready to roll, aren't you? Made all the range balls. I'm ready. Let's go. You Hop in. Let's get after. <laughs> Never doubt me again. Let's get after. Let's big go, boy. baby. Huh? Some of that, JD. How you doing, brother? Yeah, pleasure to meet you. You never know who you're gonna run into in Myrtle Beach. Hmm, you've been practicing, kid. So, John, let's go down memory lane a little bit. And uh, your your PGA Championship win. There have been a few days passed between now and then, <laughs> but when you think about that week, winning the PGA Championship, what, what's the first thing that comes to uh, comes to mind? It's hard to explain. It's like, you know, it didn't hit me until kind of after. Um, I think just thinking about, you know, all the hard work that I put in as a kid and everything. And, I mean, going from green to tee, high-fiving the fans, every every hole, and it started on the second round. Crooked Stick was a perfect golf course for me. All right, so, so let's move forward a few years winning the Open Championship. St. Andrews, the old course, the, the situation with Roca there on 18. When, when you reflect on that, what, what comes to the top of your mind? My biggest dream was to win at St. Andrews. It was the dream of my life in golf. Um, why would a blue collar guy from America dream about only winning that one? Because their golf courses look like my nine hole course I played on. <laughs> You know, I learned to play on a baseball field. You see all that dirt come up when you get out of the fairway. Yeah. It's, it's thin grass. It's, it was just the ultimate tournament that I'd ever won. And to do it at the home of golf, I, I remember Nicholas saying it. You've won, if you've won at St. Andrews, your life, your golf career is complete. Mm. You know, it's cool. I don't get the thousands anymore, but I get the ones that have followed my career and can relate. And, and that means just as much to me as teeing it up, you know, anywhere else. When fans watch golfers, they, they think everything is perfect all the time. And I, I think the average golf fan just doesn't understand emotionally how challenging this game can be. Mostly mentally, physically. I, I don't think a fan understands that, okay, shot by shot, day by day, uh, you know, we worry more about other things in our life when we get older. We taking our medicine, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> What's gonna hurt today? <laughs> I mean, it's injury after injury after injury, yeah. and uh, you know, it's tough. Yeah, well, you're gonna make some bogeys, you're gonna make some double bogeys, <laughs> and you, you've made bogeys and double bogeys off and on the golf course. You've always been open and honest about what's going on in your life. You think that's helped your relationship with the fans? Because fans still to this day, they love them some John Daly. Well, I've been honest with them. I mean, and I've been honest, you know, you got to be honest with yourself when you screw up. Go ahead and admit you screwed up, man. Yeah. Get it out of your soul and your system. And I've had thousands of people come up and say, man, I've had the same issues you've had. I've gone through this same thing. I say, I always tell them, don't be embarrassed to make mistakes in your life. You just got to try and fix them. You got to go on the next hole, right? You got to go on the next hole. You got to just try and fix them. No matter whose heart you've broken or them breaking your heart, you got to somehow make amends to them and, and make amends to yourself first because that's the only way you're going to get anything positive out of life. All right, JD, we got basically an island green here. What do we got? 243. Aren't you a member of the Champions Tour? Yeah, aren't you? Yeah, let's move on up a little bit. <laughs> going on up. <laughs> Let me get my golf shoes on. There we go. <laughs> Spikes need changed. I think you got me, let's JD. Go to the bar. You don't even have to putt from there. Those were two good shots for <laughs> yeah, us. Right, they were. <laughs> 
Make uh, t tell me maybe some things that you've done with Make a Wish. I know that's a, that's a charity that's very near and dear to your heart. So, no one ever talks about the good things that John Daly does. Well, I did Make a Wish for 14 years. Uh, we had a miracle child, Lori, had spinal cancer. She's 16 when I met her. She had like a year to live, not even. And she came through it. In 2007, they announced her cancer free. And literally, throughout the course of your life and career, millions and millions and millions of dollars have been raised to help kids. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I, let's put it this way, it's more than I've won on tour. Yeah. You know? But, but before the PGA Championship at Crooked Stick, that you were playing in what was then, I believe, um, that era was Nike Tour, that you won a, won a tournament, and you'd spent some time that week over at the orphanage. And before you left town, you basically left your whole check for that orphanage. And this was before you had a dime. Is that a true story? Um, it was actually the first year on tour. It was Ted Grassi, And I won this tournament, and I gave the check back to Mr. Grassi. Uh, I don't know. It just, it just it came out, and it felt right, and I said, just keep it. Well. I want to talk to you a little bit about your son, little John. We see him every year when you play in the in the father son in Orlando, and got a lot of talent. He's not a big talker, that's for sure. But nah, he's into it. I mean, he loves it. You know, it's his very first tournament. He shot like 98, and it was one of his first ones. And he says, "Dad, I got to work on my forearm." Mm -hmm. So you're looking at a six-year-old saying, "Dad, I need to work on my forearm." Yeah. And that's when I knew that it was just into his soul and his blood and. Uh, but he's getting a lot of he's getting a lot of attention. He's been playing great. Have you have you thought much about how challenging it would be being the son of a of, of a legend? Well, I ain't a legend, but uh, you're legend. I just tell my boy do everything opposite that I did, and you're going to win a lot of majors. <laughs> <laughs> so, won't you take the tea, and I'm just going to blow it by you? You should blow it by me. I'm on one leg. Here's my chance, I'll drive John Daly. Get right, baby. <laughs> I love his finishing hole here. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. I like that, JD. Be the club, baby, be the club. Well, you hey. might have got me with the long drive, but that's I think right. I might have got you with the approach. That's okay, I'll make my putt. <laughs> Charlie, I can't thank you enough for having me out at TPC Myrtle Beach today, man. If anybody cancels, I'll do another one with you. <laughs> oh, I'll give you that, Bo. That's pretty generous. I'm gonna make you putt that one. All right, I'll just do it one-handed. Right. Yeah, that doesn't so we really tried this hole. surprise me. <laughs> JD, as always, great hanging out with you, buddy. Appreciate you coming to TPC Myrtle Beach and hanging out with us and riding with Reimer. I enjoyed it, buddy. You're right. the best. Let's get on out here. We got a little rain coming. You know, I'm going to let you buy me a hamburger for lunch. I'll buy you two because it looks like you've been eating a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat two. <laughs> I'm Charlie Reimer, and you're watching the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. We got plenty more great stuff coming your way. So if you change this channel, you're a rotten egg. Welcome back to the Charlie Reimer Golf Show. We recently had a chance to catch up with some good friends at the American Century Celebrity Championship oh, yeah. in Lake Tahoe. It's time for What's in Your Bag. What's in your bag, David? The only thing good is the outside of the bag. Everything in here I can't hit very good. So, you know, you gotta represent Travis Matthews. And then you gotta throw my name on there. What the hell, that don't mean shh. See, I can keep it down then. So clear, I use clear golf balls, and then I put my foundation on it. So I might be the worst golfer out here, but at least I'm gonna look good. You gotta invite Boomer, Charlie. So I need an invite for your event. So don't be shy. You want bigger personality, you can call me. So what I do is I, I, you know, I have a list of things that I go through when I start playing again. It's like, you know, posture's number one. It's very important. I'm making sure the left arm is locked. Finish the swing, stay in the shot. And I, you know, I put it in my bag and before I come out and play, I take a look at it. They're little simple reminders. And I, to me, it, it's it makes the game a lot more fun because you have an opportunity to be able to start instead of from scratch. 
you know, you're ahead of the game a little bit. Hey, Charlie, where's my invitation to Myrtle Beach to play golf with you? You've ignored me for so long that you gave me the lessons and you won't let me show you what I've done with the lessons that you helped me with. So please invite me. Man, old Charlie, yeah, we go. We go way back. We were actually engaged in 1986. And then he, you know, then he just kind of got a little cocky on it. You know, I said, Charlie, you're gonna have to take my name if we get married. He didn't said he didn't want to do that. And I thought it'd be cool, both of us named Larry, but he did. <laughs> Good old Charlie. This is my boy, this is White. He's my caddy this week. And 113 is a wedge because you're very powerful. 113 use a wedge because you're very powerful. All right, thank you. He knows my strength. Well, things I have on my bag we probably can't show on television. Uh, I don't know, it depends on what state we're in. It's legal. Uh, but no, what's in my bag? Cigars, speakers. Can I please, please get my invite to Myrtle Beach? That's it. Hey, Myrtle Beach, maybe I'll see you there if Charlie invites me. Up next, let's stop by the World Am, where 3,000 golfers compete on over 50 of Myrtle Beach's best courses. This is the biggest, most fun golf tournament on the entire planet, folks. Let's meet some of the competitors. My name is James Anderson, uh, 35 years old, and I'm in the fifth flight. I played 10 years. Uh, my first seven years were in Carolina. I played for the Panthers. Then I went to the Bears, played there for a year. In 2014, I went to the Patriots. Then I went to the Titans, the Falcons, and the Cowboys all in the same year. And then I finished up my last year with the Saints. Golf helps level me out because, you know, being a competitive football player and playing in the National Football League for so long, you get a way to compete, you get a way to be elite, right? Even the guys on tour are steady trying to, to get better. Every time you go play, you can learn something. It gives you a goal to shoot for, something to go work towards, something to grind in. And coming here, you get a chance to test your skills, test your knowledge of the game, test your course management. What I've been working on has the things I've been working on, are they working? Can I do them under pressure? For me, that experience is invaluable, and I feel like coming here with this amount of golfers, traveling away from home, playing multiple courses that you haven't seen is kind of a test of everything. Then when I come home from the golf course, whether I play well or not, my daughter's at the door looking at me. So nothing's better than that. It's the 2022 Dustin Johnson World Junior, presented by LA Golf. The best junior golfers from around the world have been invited to tee it up at TPC Myrtle Beach, right next door to Dustin Johnson's Golf School. As the juniors warm up for their practice rounds, we've handpicked some stars to go head to head with DJ in a short game contest. So good morning, everybody. Welcome to DJ's Golf Tournament in the short game contest. I'm gonna do what I do best, which is talk a lot um, and, and uh, get these guys teed up. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit three shots. We're gonna hit a flop shot. We're gonna hit a bunker shot. We're gonna come right up here and hit about a 40 yard pitch. And, and we're gonna let DJ go first and, and maybe talk us through a little bit of, of um, how he's gonna play that shot. And that's not gonna eat up a lot of time. I can tell you that because he doesn't overthink anything. That's one of the great things of watching him play golf. And then these three are gonna have a contest. We've got that big Tommy Morrison here who keeps getting bigger. I remember, you know, it used to be this way. Now, so I don't know what they're feeding you out in Texas, but you're eating a lot of it. We got Ben James and we got Bailey Shoemaker here. So um, the winner of each one of the three contests that we have is gonna get a DJ signed hat and some product from LA Golf as well. So uh, let's get after it. We're gonna start with a flop shot right here. Now y'all jump right in. This is your chance to dig in there with DJ. I think he's probably got pretty decent short game would be my take on it. 
Um, it's not great right now. I need to get a little practice in here before next week. But from here, you know, pin's not too close, but it's still on a downhill slope the whole way. So you're just trying to make sure you land it short. But just judging how the ball is going to come out, which is the hardest thing to do in the rough. The only way to do that is practice it. Everybody plays them a little bit different. I think you need to figure out what's the best way for you to play them. You know, in the rough, I, I tend to play it a little bit more back, even though I'm hitting a flop shot. Obviously, I'm hitting a really high short one. I'll move it up a little bit, yeah, but yeah. most of them, I play probably just back of center, just so I can make nice contact. Hit a little hard, but. No, that's pretty good. You're the first person that I've talked to, and I've been fortunate to talk to a lot of folks about hitting flop shots to talk about getting a little farther back in the stance. And and uh, I had never really heard that before. So that, that was interesting for me to hear. I mean, do you go back in your stance? Let's touch forward, personally. Kind of lean on it, open the face, swing left. Just don't dump in the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's see it. Grab. Pretty good. I think DJ still got you, though. By the way, DJ, is that 60? Is that your 60, flop? 60, yeah. Is that it's what probably... you use most, most of the time around the grains? Just depends. I mean, out of the rough, and most of the time, yeah. Um, bunkers, unless it's a long one, but. Is your next wedge at 56? 54. 54? I got you. How many times in a year are you going to swap out wedges? Uh, I change my 60 a lot, probably. Okay every three tournaments maybe oh, I'll change oh, wow. 60. Do you do you have make a batch for the whole year for you? No, they, well, I have a drawer on the truck with a bunch of minutes. So. He's got his own drawer <laughs> on the truck, yeah. Anybody up there got their own drawer on the truck? Yeah, I didn't think so. Bailey, do you Taylor, have your own Taylor drawer? Taylor May does a good job taking care of me, so. <laughs> All right, Bailey, let's see what you got. Set. Fly in the hole. Yeah, almost. Man, that was all over, just a little bit long. All right, Tommy. Yeah. Right. Hang on, big it. shot right there. Tommy wins our first contest. I don't like messing up with my signature. I just signed it underneath. All right, let's move into the bunker. All right, so walk us through this one, DJ. You know, in the bunker, Depending on the shot kind of is where I play it in my stance, you know, I'll move it a good bit. And very rare do I like to hit like a bunker sh bunker shot with a lot of spin, just cause I'm trying to control it, control the distance. So I, a lot of times I like to let it hit and roll. When the bunker, like this is a drill I do all the time. It's just, just so I can get the face rotating. Yeah, and if you don't rotate it, that sand's gonna fall out early, right? Right. Yeah. So I, I do this. It's just a drill I do to work on my bunker shots. Didn't play the right break, but. Yeah. No, that looked was, right. I've, I've always tried to spin the ball, and so I hit a lot of them thin, but getting that ball rolling like a, almost like a putt as soon as you can, that's what you, the goal is for you, right? Right. Obviously, I try not to hit myself in situations where you, you know, you're stuck, where the flag's too close to you, where you have to hit an unbelievable shot to get it close. Yeah. I try to err on the far side of the green where I got more green to work with. Yeah. And one more question while we're at it. You, you talk about practice. I mean, I don't get the sense that you do a, maybe a whole lot of structure in your practice. I but do. It's, it's, I'm it... actually really structured. OK, but so what, yeah, what does practice look like for you? I just don't you? practice for a very long time. OK. I always try to go to the range with like a plan, what yeah. I'm going to do. And you know, some days it might be 30 minutes. Some days it might be four hours. It just. Kind of depends on how long I can stay focused on what I'm doing. Yeah. But as soon as I lose focus on what I'm doing, I'll just leave. Just then you're just gonna do damage, right? Yeah. I don't get any better, and if anything, I make myself worse. So I'll do, you know, half hour of putting, half hour of chipping, and then maybe 30 minutes on the range, yeah. just of really focused on what I'm trying to do, and then I get out of there. Perfect. Or I'll go play. Yeah. So I like to play a lot. So. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Let's see it, Tommy. Nice. That was nice. Good well, shot. That'll do. Really nice right there. I was the guinea pig. I showed him the break. <laughs> no, a little I'm heavy. It didn't quite roll out. All right, let's see, Ben. Well, that had a great sound. Yeah. 
Good shot. It was like me just didn't read it right. It looks like it goes right, but it actually breaks right to left. Yeah, good distance. We got a hat winner right there. Let's move right up here, and we're going to hit a uh, pitch off some tightly mown. I see you got a nice lie there. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put it on the coastline. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so DJ, this is a shot that scares a lot of people. We're like 35 yards over a bunker, tight lie. What's your approach to a shot like this? I'm just going to play probably just like kind of a normal pitch, let it check, and then release to the hole. Yeah, yeah. So, Whatever so, the most consistent shot you can hit is, is how I'd play it. But, you know, this is a, a, another situation where it's all about controlling your spin. So knowing how much your ball is going to spin. You're obviously practicing on the course you're going to play on so you can figure out how the ball is going to react and what it's going to do. Obviously a little bit different from week to week. Yeah. We were talking about your wedges earlier. Do you make adjustments on, on like leading edge and bounce and that sort of stuff from week to week, or is it pretty much the same all the time? No, I use the same wedge all the time, yeah. every course, no matter where I'm playing. Yeah. Does it tickle you to see guys in there grinding their own wedges with sparks flying everywhere and that sort of yeah, stuff? Yeah, but very, I mean, there are maybe one or two guys that might do that. Do that. So, is it, well, now they're, you know, all the wedges are milled or, you know, companies make so many different types of bounces that you can find one that you like, and if you do, they're always the same. Every Replicate them every time. Yeah. yeah. It's perfect. Let's see it. Let's see if I can just make good contact. Set. Set. I hit it too hard. Bailey, before we get you to hit, I was wanting to chat with you a little bit. Um, where are you going to go to school? Have you got all that worked out yet? Yes, sir. USC, Southern California. Wow. One of the top programs around right there. Yeah. I know that's a great school academically, too. You've got to have some strong interest in academics there, I would think, as yeah, well. Yeah, education's still important to me, but of course I want to go for it like anyone else. Well, cool. Well, let's see this 40-yarder right here. Oh, she clipped it nice. Hit it. Oh, hit it. Almost rattled it. Tommy, talk to me a little bit about your plans. Where are you headed to school? I'm going to play college golf at the University of Texas at Austin. Cool. Yeah. I know you've been committed to Texas for a while, haven't you? A couple years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You will say grew up. You're still growing. How tall are you? Six foot nine. <laughs> yeah. They're making them big now, aren't they, DJ? Yeah, I don't feel short very often, on, especially on tour, ever. Yeah, I feel short sitting next to him. <laughs> That's it. That's some good action there. Yeah. All right, Ben, come on up, buddy. Talk to me about your plans. What are you going to do for school? I'm going to the University of Virginia in the fall. So I'll be, I'll be there for planning to stay four years and hopefully go on the PGA Tour. Talk to me a little bit about academics. What are you going to study while you're there? Either political science or sociology. I thought about taking sociology, but I wasn't going to study anything I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> I can't spell it either. Yeah, well, cool. Well, let's see what you got. Is it a workout? Hang on, hang on. A little heavy, but you got away with it for sure. Well, nice getting to know you all a little bit more, and uh, it's uh, fun watching your short game here, and it's gonna be really fun to see what y'all do at Texas, Virginia, and USC. And we look forward to watching the future unfold for these great players, thank DJ. You. Absolutely, thank you. Thanks for playing, and really thank you for supporting my event. The eighth annual Dustin Johnson World Junior is coming up in March of 2023. Don't miss it. That's about it for this episode. Time to unwind by the water. Thanks for joining us on the Charlie Romer Golf Show. In golf, there is nothing quite as satisfying as a well-struck shot. The reward of seeing the ball fly strong and true right at the target, nothing like it. But it doesn't happen by accident. You gotta believe that great preparation will lead to great execution. Give it a shot in life. I'm betting you'll like the results. That's it for the Charlie Romer Golf Show. Keep it in the fairway, folks. Playing golf with Reimer, you're gonna have a blast. Now that I've lost some weight, we both can fit on his cart, which helps. <laughs>
I'm so scared I can't remember my lines. I'm too fat to do One. stuff like this. So why would I do this? You think Brad Pitt would do this shit? I don't think he would. You do it. Here in Myrtle Beach, we got so much to do for the entire family. In fact, I never get bored. We're gonna be right back from commercial break by the time I get down the end of this zip line. Do you make it? Welcome back to the Charlie Romer Golf Show. I was gonna do it, I really was, folks. I was ready, I was gonna do it, and they told me that I'm too, I'm, I'm too tall. Yeah, that's it, they told me I'm too tall. So let's head back out to the golf course where I'm much more comfortable. Hey, Chris, hey! You're a fine stunt double. He's a fine stunt double. Now get back in here and give me that shirt. <laughs> 